Hello, and welcome back to the Douglas Fir Association. And we have finished the original series of Twin Peaks. Um, we're recording this the same night that we did the last one because it's just, you know, it's in the air. Something blowing through the trees. And uh, yeah, I, I guess we've got thoughts. You've probably got more thoughts than I have. Um, so what did you think of the conclusion to season two of Twin Peaks? Well, why don't you see for yourself? It's a video here. I'll see you again in 25 years. Meanwhile. Holy fucking shit, not Goop! Oh, Jesus Christ! Imagine having to wait how many years for that new season to come out. Oh my god. I am speechless. Yeah, I'm glad that you recorded that. that <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to have seen my own reaction. I can't remember now. Although, I think I did tell you at one point that uh, I had seen that scene before in some like yeah. cl clip show, um, but I don't think it really registered when I was watching it properly. Yeah. But yeah, and that's that. That's an ending. The whole episode, though, is like, at least the first 10 minutes is like, right, here's some of the threads. Let's just like cliffhanger the fuck out of them. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey and Pete have blown up, maybe. Uh yeah. you know, Ben Horn is like fatally wounded in the head, maybe. And then and then we're just gonna throw Cooper into the the mouth of madness, into the Black Lodge. And uh yeah, let's Black Black Lodge on crack, you know, Cooper's dark descent into absolute chaos, Lynch style. Yeah. It makes me wonder if that's Cooper's own interpretation of the Black Lodge, or if that's what the Black Lodge actually is. I wonder if everyone's experience is slightly different. That that's a great, great thing. I'd never even considered. That's a fantastic idea. I love that. And people do theorize over the line that the the man from another place, the little guy, he says, "This is the waiting room." I think something to that effect. So some people yeah. theorize that that the red room is like the waiting room to maybe further, you know, hell. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, because obviously Coop loves coffee, and the whole coffee thing would be like quite individual to him. Um, so that that made me think, like, is this like a, like catered to him as such? Yeah, so I thought that was quite interesting. But man, that that whole red room sequence where he's running back and forth between the rooms is just man. <laughs> It got me. It really did. I recorded so much footage throughout of that, awesome. and you can just see. I watched it back while we were waiting to come back on, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah, that, it just hit me so hard." So we've now found out Coop has now got Bob inside of him, which is I, of all the scenarios I thought that would happen. That was not one of them. I never even considered it. Mm. Um, it yeah, it, it it just makes for such a. Uh, an interesting dynamic now for the for the later series. Um, like, uh, I know I said in that clip I sent to you that like um that wait of twenty five years and not having closure on that must have been a killer. Um, thankfully we can just now watch that whenever we like. But it's it's absolutely crazy. 
that that was just left hanging there for 25 years <laughs> to know that like you're, you're probably everyone's beloved character throughout the show has obviously got to be I, I think got to be Cooper is just such a likeable character and to have that happen to him at the end and just have no closure over it is is just crazy to me um, but it's fucking well done <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you you say that uh, you you would never have expected that that's what would happen, that Coop would have Bob inside of him, but have you not considered the possibility that, uh, you know, we, we saw two Coopers in that Black Lodge? True, you know? true. Maybe the wrong Coop came out. Is it the real Cooper? Yeah. And, that's, and, that, and that goes back to, like, a way of interpreting the, the show's title, perhaps Twin Peaks. You know, obviously it's the town and it's the... It's the two mountain tops, but you know, even from like the first season, you have like Maddie, who's like a twin of Laura in some ways, and the kind of double lives that a lot of people live. And then right at the end, Cooper literally kind of confronted with uh, his shadow self, as Hawk once put it. You know, in the Black Lodge, you will meet your shadow self. Yeah. So that's you know, it, that really threw me when you when you because obviously all that stuff is happening in Windermill and all that. And then Cooper runs in and he's like got a big grin on his face. Oh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like the first time I watched it. Yeah. And then he's like laughing along with Bob and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is that him? Is that? And then obviously he starts chasing himself or, you know, however you want to interpret it. And uh, it was, it was kind of like a cool, like cameo fest in a way as well. Like you get like Laura showing up after, you know, feels like so long. And uh, it, rem it reminded me of, um, you know, Evil did too, where he's got Evil Ash and Normal Ash. Really reminded me of that, the way they were chasing each other. Um, <laughs> it, oh, man, it's just so well done. And the other theory I've now got in my head is that, well, is, is Cooper seeing himself lying on the floor another future thing? Is is Cooper going to die and bleed out? Um, yeah, so it's so, like, because at the time I thought, shit, is Coop dead? I was like, well, that wouldn't really make sense going to the next season, but what if Coop's not alive in the next season? And maybe he's, you know, he's just an entity as such. Um, so yeah, man, <sighs> total brain fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was excited for you to get to this one and just for me to revisit it myself because I'd forgotten a lot of the finer details. The whole, um, the Sycamore Trees performance, like that. I yeah. thought was I thought that was from the movie. I'd forgotten if it was actually in this episode or not. But like, you know, <laughs> he goes in and suddenly there's just like a, a singer <laughs> doing this, and it's uh, it's a really it's lo even longer than I remembered it. The whole sequence obviously gets cut between like Truman just like you know determined waiting there like like ten hours like he's not he's not going to go anywhere until his mates back from this place and so. Um, you do get bits and pieces, but it's like a big, massive portion of the episode is in that the red room. When Sarah started screaming, I had the biggest goosebumps come up on my arm, man. It's just such a visceral scream. Really <laughs> terrifying. She, yeah, she she's really got a <laughs> it's it's a, a memorable scream for sure. It's very um it grabs you. Yeah. Um yeah. Especially when it's in reverse as well. And uh, and as I said to you on WhatsApp, the whole line, I'll see you again in 25 years, which yeah. does go back to the, the pilot and when they kind of had the the original Red Room sequence set 25 years later. And then in the full series, Cooper's like, I had a dream that was 25 years in the future. So it's kind of there from the beginning. And that was the inkling that kind of gave them a, a spark and an interest for actually going back to Twin Peaks after 25 years. So that's kind of a... We actually had some characters come back in this episode as well. So we had Ronette, who was yep. one of the original victims, and we also had um, Laura's mom. Uh, Sarah, is it? Yeah? Yeah. Um, and Sarah was talking to... Um... Briggs. Briggs, yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that whole series, that whole sequence was quite interesting as well. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's just such a standout episode. It, it's really... Um, Shocked me about um, Jack Nancy's character. Why I'm so shit with names. Pete. Pete, yeah, really shocked me with Pete. I thought you know Pete would, you know, it, it seems like one of the most unlikely characters to just be exited from the show. But the way that bomb went off, I think there's no way he survived. Um, 
I actually, I actually had an inkling that that was coming. To be fair, with a bomb, I thought there's no way there's going to be anything over there, and then then something that's going to hurt them because obviously there's hatred between them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, just such a great episode. Really was. And that whole um, that whole the, <laughs> the bag sequence. It's such a funny scene because it, it drags on forever, and <laughs> yeah. it's like just when you get into the good stuff, the black lord, just like right now, we're gonna just take you out of that. I'm gonna have this. What's his name? Del Nibbler or something. This <laughs> this guy who's like, <laughs> he's got a name like a Beano character, and then he just the way he's like shuffling around. Oh, and it reminded me of the, you know, the 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 waiter, you know, the old man from the first, the beginning yeah. of the season two, just really draggy. <laughs> and then the build up and the explosion. The worst person in the world you could have in charge of a bank vault. <laughs> Is that, and there's like a woman there's a woman behind him at the desk just asleep the whole time with her head just like that and like such a small town that Twin Peaks is and you've got this huge massive room full of safety deposit boxes <laughs> thousands upon thousands of boxes probably population of a thousand <laughs> and that like the big uh, the big vault kind of door like the massive yeah, like yeah. five foot thick steel you know <laughs> Should have like Acme written on the side of it. It's like something out of a Looney Tunes thing. But um Yeah, it's it's a real standout one. I still think for me the the episodes like um when you find out who the killer is and stuff like that, uh, my favorite episodes. But this one is just for the sheer and then just again the cliffhanger of it, which I believe was less than wanting to leave it on a mystery and more than wanting to force the studio to let them do more basically so they're yeah. throwing in like multiple cliffhangers and the biggest one of all is you know the, the kind of evil side of cooper uh, but it wasn't to be and so lich went off made the prequel and that was it for many many years so in terms of in terms of the missing pieces what's in that then okay so fire walk with me is the movie um which came out in 92 yeah so when they did the the blu-ray box set uh, I think Lynch kind of negotiated a deal to go back to all the deleted scenes and restore them, but also put together like a feature length presentation of them. So okay. the, miss- the missing piece is almost like an alternate version of Fire Walk With Me. Um, it isn't as narratively structured, but it does basically start from the beginning and then goes to the end. And it's like extended scenes, but also lots of characters from the show who didn't end up in the final version of the movie so okay. i think, I think. Ed, I think ed and norma are not in the movie but they were filmed and so you get to see that in the missing oh. pieces okay. um and actually when i told you like we need to watch the missing pieces um there's a deleted bit an alternate ending of sorts which kind of continues on just a little bit from how's annie so oh. they actually but it, it's not much, but it's a little bit. But I can see why they didn't put it in the final movie because it's yeah. it's Laura's story, not Cooper's. So yeah. the way they end it is much better. But it's nice that they, you know, pulled that out of the archives after all those things came out. 2014 or something, the box set. So it's like oh, 20 cool. plus years later. And it's uh, it's pretty, pretty good. It's like a 90 minute presentation. That's really cool. That's awesome, man. Looking forward to getting to that. Yeah, so that's our next step, is the movie. How are you feeling about that? I'm really excited for it. As I say, we've we've had a few characters that we've lost now um, that I'm excited to go back and see, such as Leland. Um, so it's it'd be interesting to see what Leland... I know you said it was quite dark, the movie. Um, so it'd be interesting to see. Because we, we only ever saw Leland with Bob being that nasty person. Um, we for most of the series of Twin Peaks, we saw him as a normal person or a breaking down father that had just lost his daughter. So it'd be interesting to see how the film portrays him in in as a monster as such, where he's obviously got Bob inside of him, not Leon himself, but with yeah. with Bob, um, and that leading up to that. So yeah, I'm intrigued to see it, and it'd be interesting to see because I know you said Donna didn't didn't Donna didn't come back for the movie. Um, yeah, different actress in the film. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd be interested to see who portrays her. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm really excited for it. And just to be back in that now, knowing what we know at the end of all of this um, and where it's going is is going to be awesome. Um, and I know you said, I know um, Coop isn't in it much, but you said Coop makes a few appearances throughout the film. So that's interesting as well. See him in a different setting outside of Twin Peaks would be cool. 
Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of that, yeah. I think I think there was there was an issue where he he felt like he didn't want to get typecast a little bit, or maybe I don't know. It, 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 there was some like drama that went on where he was supposed to have a bigger part, but he ultimately felt really loyal to David. I think, and you yeah. know, kind of did did a few bits and pieces. But it is, as I say, it is Laura's story. If I walk with me, and it's yeah, I, I, I'm I'm glad that it happened because she's such a good actress, and you know. There's snippets of it throughout the series, but in this, she she really gets to dive deep on that character, so it's pretty cool. Brilliant, yeah. And I only just I only just recently read that there, it was initially going to be a trilogy. Oh well. Wow. And I couldn't really find much about what the other two were going to be, and perhaps they would, you know, finish off the story maybe. Um, yeah. But Firewalk with Me was like an absolute disaster, like you know booed at the film festivals wow. people hated it it kind of just soured lynch on it i think he just was he was like you know a bit upset but obviously once you make something yeah. people just hate it and i think people just weren't ready for it because it's it's not the show it's not yeah. that warm fuzzy <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh you know it's a david lynch film so yeah <laughs> so yeah anything else you'd like to add about the finale before we wrap this up um, I just think like it, it that ending just makes up for some of the some of the slack that we'd seen. Um, but <laughs> yeah. it, it it would it was really honed in like what the show was. Um, and it's really brought it back to its roots. Um, it's it, absolutely fantastic. I couldn't have asked for more to be honest. It was such a fantastic ending to you know the, the sort of a month and a half it's taken us to get here. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, even like a little bit where um, Truman sat on that log waiting for Cooper to come back out of the lodge, and Andy's there. Yeah, it's just like a really long scene where he's like, "Do you want to bring you some coffee?" Ten second pause. It feels like, yeah. <laughs> Do you want some food? <laughs> yeah, like the way he just lets things sit. I think really stands out. And uh... Do you want a dessert? <laughs> Oh, we I I like the cute opening of this the episode where it's the Andy and Lucy telling each other they they love each other for the first time yeah, like in synchronicity nice. that was a nice little beat. Um, so we we also don't know how effective Ben Horn is at this point. Um, cause he's, just, he's just lying on the floor, obviously bleeding, um, unconscious. And ironically, the only person there that could help him is the doctor that knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I did find it a bit strange where he just like punches him and he goes flying into the thing and yeah. then doc is just like Rah! on his knees <laughs> like what the... <laughs> like he's he's usually such a mild mannered character yeah. and, it, and he's just you stop that now ben Rah! and he's just like almost like bilbo in lord of the rings he just suddenly goes Rah! what a world you know but yeah so i mean why walk with me can't wait um Roll to it, man. yeah um so we'll leave it there and uh, this is the only quote you could ever possibly leave on at this point is, how's Annie? <laughs>